In this video, we're going to prove that if we have a Cauchy sequence in space, that each of the component sequences are also Cauchy. So over here, I've written the definition of what it means for a sequence to be Cauchy. So a sequence a sub n is Cauchy if for every epsilon greater than zero, we can find a positive integer n such that for all little n and little m bigger than capital N, the distance between them can be made less than epsilon. This symbol here, if this is a sequence of real numbers, then it's just going to be absolute value. If this is a sequence in higher dimensional space, we'll pretend it's the Euclidean norm. Let's go ahead and go through the proof. The proof of this problem has some really key ideas that are super useful. And we'll talk about those ideas as we go through the proof. I think I can show you how to prove it quickly and explain it and like figure it out at the same time. So we'll start by assuming our sequence is Cauchy. So suppose that we have a Cauchy sequence. So we have the sequence here and we'll assume it's Cauchy. So suppose P sub n is Cauchy. And the claim is that we want to show that each of these is Cauchy. So let's start by showing this one is Cauchy. So to show it's Cauchy, we'll start by taking an epsilon greater than zero. So let epsilon be greater than zero. Since this is Cauchy, now we're going to use the Cauchyness of P. So since little p sub n, this sequence is Cauchy. This means there exists a natural number or a positive integer n such that for all little n and little m bigger than capital N, the distance between Pn and Pm can be made arbitrarily small. In other words, you can make it less than epsilon. Okay, so we're here. So what do we do now? Well, if you're figuring this out, you would just keep rewriting it. And I, I suppose, let's just do that. So I'm just gonna keep rewriting it. There's nothing wrong with doing that in the proof. It's actually really helpful, I think. So this means that, well, P sub n is this triple here, x sub n, y sub n, z sub n, minus, and then x sub m, y sub m, z sub m. And this is less than epsilon. We can now subtract the components. And this is true for all little n, and little m bigger than capital N. This will be x sub n minus x sub m, y sub n minus y sub m, z sub n minus z sub m, and that's less than epsilon. Now we're gonna invoke the definition of the norm, right? So let's do it. This is the square root, and then you square this. You square this, going kind of fast, long proof. And then you square this. Also, my battery is really low, so hopefully I can finish this video if it makes it, if it ever makes it to the internet. So we're here. That's a two. And then, so now we're almost done. So how is that possible? So we have to show this is Cauchy. So we took an epsilon greater than zero. We showed the existence of an n, and then for all little n and little m bigger than capital N, now we're going to look at the distance between xn and xm, because we're doing this one. So then xn minus xm, so this is absolute value here. So I, I, I know I'm using the same notation to mean two different things. It's a little bit abusive. So if you want to be more perfect, you can put like double bars here, but let's just go with it. This is equal to the um, square root of this. You can do that. The absolute value of x is equal to the square root of x squared. That's a thing from, from math. And this is the most important step. This is it. It's all about this step. So I'm going to write this down again. And then I'm going to add stuff to it so that the inequality is true. So I'm going to add the rest of it. You could do that. You could totally do that because you're adding positive numbers to the right-hand side. So the right-hand side is actually bigger than the left-hand side, right? Because this is less than this because you're adding stuff. So this is bigger than this. And this is less than epsilon. And so for every epsilon greater than zero, we found a positive integer n such that for all little n and little m bigger than capital N, the distance between x sub n and x sub m is less than epsilon. Likewise, you can do the same thing for y. You could do, so I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it here. So likewise, y sub n minus y sub m is equal to the square root of y sub n minus y sub m squared. That's less than or equal to, same thing, I'll just write it again, x sub n minus x sub m squared plus y sub n 
just adding terms, and you can add terms that are positive or zero. So um, this inequality will certainly be true, and that is less than epsilon. And I'll leave it here, I'll stop it here, but you could do the same thing with the Z's and show that they are Cauchy also. So piece of cake. Really, really nice problem. And if you take anything away from this video, if you've made it, if you're still watching this video and you've ta you take anything away from it, it's this, okay? This is, this is super useful. This is something you will see time and time again when you're working with metric spaces and when you're working with mathematical analysis, AKA advanced calculus. Take care.